performance measurements, I think, will play a significant role in, uh, um, in our case study, correct? Because we've got so many um, factors to consider, as in, it's not just one company, six stores, as well as as to make they have added um, our franchises, franchises rather, okay? So they play a significant role. Now, we talk about um, the financial in performance measurement, we will look at financial indicators as well as the non-financial performance indicators, yes. okay? When we look at the financial indicators, Right. There is benchmarking analysis of reporting by dimensions and problems with financial performance indicators. We go into that. Okay. So let's look at benchmarking and analysis of reporting by dimensions. Right. What do you think would be? Benchmarking and analysis of reporting by di dimensions. Correct. You can you can compare against um, against P as well as even within um, your 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 stores. You can benchmark, right? So you have so many stores, mm -hmm. and then you can really benchmark. Um, so what would you be benchmarking? The question. So we, we can benchmark. So what are the KPIs for benchmarking? So we can, uh, we can list the store we have in, in terms of uh, waste. Uh, Breaking up. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yes. Do you hear me now? No. It's very bad. It's bad. Mm. Anything from you, Gavin? Yeah, I can benchmark processes. If they're specific, if you're if you have to be specific, right? So what would benchmark? If you, let's say in like in these guys, I've got nine hundred stores, right? Nine hundred plus stores. What would you be benchmarking? I look at even a very high level. I would look at cost of goods sold. This is at a very, very high level. I'm looking at cost of goods sold, right? So you would do comp with your pet, or comp with the, uh, with the stores. stores? Across the stores. I'm just looking at, you know, what is my cost of goods sold, right? So I can look at um, across. Then you look at um, what is the direct, direct cost, mm -hmm. right? Uh, profitability. Yeah, profitability. Uh, once. Watch. Okay. Then we we'll look at our favorite, which is admin cost. Mm -hmm. right. Because I want to see what is going on in here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. 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 Right. We are cut across to see, okay. um, and I'm asking you to be specific because the examiner does not like when you when you give generic answers, okay. Okay. right? He he's expecting you at that level to be quite specific and say, okay, you know, I have identified this is what I want to do, right? Um, because process, I agree with you then it becomes quite generic okay. yeah right we don't know what process is unless you um, we clearly state what this is and what measurement is it going to be right okay. then this is of reporting by dimensions what is that uh, Yeah. 
I'm not because you mean by dimension because my in my profession when I say dimension, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about uh, different aspects like geographic uh, divisions, for example, or mm -hmm. divisions. Mm -hmm. But geographic, I'll, I'll talk about the performance of the stores in the eastern region compared to the yes. western region. Yes. So, so in, the, in this case, mm -hmm. it may be graphic aspect, does mean the functional aspect. Of the right. What do you get? I mean, what, what are your views on it? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is dimensions. The reporting is done through dimensions. Mostly we are looking at financial dimensions, right? The angles that we are looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, in benchmarking, we can benchmark financial non financial. So this could be financial, financial. Basis of reporting by dimensions, the dimensions would be the financial dimensions, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, a lot of financial fancy kind of reporting. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Then let's look into um financial indicators, right? Again, this is nothing but um our ratios okay i yes. think all of you are quite familiar with the ratios right yes. and you calculating the normal profitability ratios liquidity ratios and things like that to kind of understand okay return on investment or rce return on capital employed is so another ratio that that you can calculate okay uh, but these are um, these. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The capital employed in this case because I the equity, uh, split the equity and defined it in the accounting term. Yeah. Now, it is an accounting question as straightforward, you know, easy to compute. But when you speak about capital employed, are it the both the funds? That be invested by the owners and the loans. Correct. Took from the, the total bank. capital employed. He's talking about the total capital employed. ROCE. We will take the total capital employed, which is long term loans, uh, capital, right, and equity. I see. Yes. Okay. That's, that's right. Yes. Sorry. Is it a trade organization? Right. Why uh, now? It's fine. You are taking the long term loan because it is total less minus uh, current liability. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, the uh, it's a, you know if it's a large trading firm, mm -hmm. most of your working capital lies capital lies in short term working mm capital. -hmm. And uh, if you do this R O C E, yeah. if you use this competition, don't think maybe without. Uh, Two of this is okay. Mm -hmm. Capital, which is long term capital. Mm -hmm. Right. Looking at long term capital, if you have invested in my company for a long term basis mm -hmm. and put in shares, Yakub mm -hmm. has put in long term loans, right? Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, I'm looking at it to say, okay. Return that you get, mm -hmm. long term commitment that you're giving. Okay. From that point of view, not correct. Possibly. Correct. Because what we're saying is working capital. Yeah. Together. Mm -hmm. Right? Work is different that of return on investment. Right? The funds are purely um, uh, return on capital employed. So you can, what you can do is calculate the ratios, 
right? Mm -hmm. Your finance, uh, finance, uh, you have the financial statement, calculate ratios, right? We will do a ratio analysis as well. Okay. So the ones with ROI would be that they do it on CBI, correct. Yes. Okay. So ROI and RI suffer um, then disadvantages, right? Of course, both of them. The thing is, in the absence of none, right? We should use something. We can't. There, it is disadvantage. I mean, they have disadvantages. Therefore, I'm not using nothing, right? It's not kind of a view that you will take. We are conscious of the fact that there are disadvantages, so therefore we are not relying 100% on this. Because another thing that we can get asked is, uh, well, we've got these are the ROIs and the ROCs of each different um, stores, right? And what are our views on it? Hmm. it comes to a, uh, an answer, you should be able to. These are disadvantages. So the thing, the assets, the investment can be based on net assets, exactly. growth assets or replacement costs. But assets, none of huh? these is dear. Investment centers might use different bases to value inventory and calculate depreciation. Right? Any changes made for the use of head office services or allocations of head office assets to investment centers are likely to be arbitrary. So there will be a lot of cost allocation done. Then this whole thing works in a different way. Yeah, the can be massaged if such base of the ratio is altered, increase or decrease payables and receivables by spring or delay payments and receipts. What we say is you can manipulate this. Quite easily, yeah. right? So we should be aware of this. Okay. The biggest pro the biggest problem in divisional performance measurement occurs if a div division maintains the same annual profit, keeps same assets without a policy of regular non-current asset replacement, and mm -hmm. values asset at net book value. Yeah. This is a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, yeah. Because, you know, it is investing in new assets because divide, when you divide by uh, how that has been depreciated for four years, yes. the base will be very small and the percentage of the return on the investment will be huge. It will be, it will be exactly. nice. <laughs> yeah. So people tend to shine away from uh, yes. yeah. Yes. It's from you, Gavin. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, you can be, but they are saying you, you change the graph it doesn't yes. mean uh, this is it. Then when we, because see, on the income side, and yeah. I, I, I think they, they take this as a, as a, as a total, because on the income side, you would have uh, uh, for the uh, income side, you would have the 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 income side, so maybe you EBITDA versus uh, uh, your graph book. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, the EBITDA will be or your, your, your income, which has not been littered off for depreciation or tax. Yeah. And the book looks at the depreciation on the other side. So that will give you a more uh, uh, better. Correct. Or, yeah, I think maybe you can do it. A view. Yeah. Based, it's company, it's a company has a huge... Uh, Process, it's that is then yes. you can use this. Now, this company, yes, there is a huge uh, fixed asset base, so yes, you could manipulate it. Depends how long they do the depreciation, also. Correct. Right. The other thing I would see is who is maintaining the you now the six assets if they have separated um, each one of the stores, right? Then you will be able to count a store. 
return on capital employed right if they are not then we are in a very difficult situation right um, if another thing is make per region they will do it yeah at least rather than uh, yes my the key factor here correct in anything you know yeah. how, how, how are they managing it is it that uh yeah, the thing is yes the factor is um so like i mean yakub you're very right where people if if you entirely depend on this kind of um you know a yeah. measurement they are away from investment right that is one aspect so there could be this is one among many yeah yeah you want to get it in isolation then all the other numbers yes yes so roi i would emphasize for you to look at right the advantages disadvantages of roi so you look into the advantages and the disadvantages big kind of a question that they they can throw in because you have um uh, asset base right so it is that they could some you know question this so this is what exactly what we said right there be um the factors which does not not affect our growth of the company right purely because of the way we measure okay so you added is a very interesting i just had a session with another lady um where it's very confusing to get this the meaning of this okay it's a new concept it's a new concept it can you add it basically let's see what you you got get out of it let's see if you understand understand yeah yeah Uh, yes. The, the concept here is to differentiate between the pure strict accounting profit mm -hmm. and and the economic profit, and there is one major difference between the two. Mm -hmm. That you know, economic profit takes into consideration the cost of capital. Mm -hmm. It is implied. It's not in paper. There is no invoice. You know, but What is they have given bits of time, they say bits of time, money to invest, and it's it's an equity investment, right? Yes. But the the economists say, well, bits of time is a cost for this capital. You have to account for it. Mm-hmm. Accountants say, well, no, this is zero. We we'll record zero on our books because there's mm -hmm. no interest charge. There is no emotion involved here, mm -hmm. and that you know the major difference at this end. There is a cost of capital uh, to be considered when computing the economic profit. Mm -hmm. Come to the strict defined accounting profit. Right. Uh, I think that's the major idea here. Uh, thank you. Yeah, okay. Because so what do you get? Yes. I'm on, on the same line that you have. I think it's, it's about uh, calculating profit. Uh, net profit. But on the only thing I understand is they have used uh, replacement cost of assets. Now, the period is um, yeah, it talks about a three-year period, three-year horizon. But uh, it, it looks like I think from uh, it's the new mention that will come in say mm -hmm. capital. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. If you, if you capital is higher than what you are doing, then sometimes you question why. We are trying to measure basically is actually you measure the management of 
performance. Yes. Right, what happens? Okay. Uh, you can calculate economic value added in our um, in our case. The name is it is factory. The question I had with my previous student was they had given a question to say, well, um, can you what industry can um, economic value added be utilized? Right. Mm. It was a very interesting question because yeah. they had consultancy as they had manufacturing, right? Had examples mm. of like um, of um, of like um, manufacturing of like printers, mm -hmm. computers, mm -hmm. right? And even say pizza. Right? <laughs> That question, but in our question, we can say the pizza. Pizza is manufactured. But if I go into consulting, I can't, I can't calculate it. Right? But I say replacement cost of, you know, I just took here this example on page 251 in the big large group. Yeah. Now they add on uh, replacement of assets. Yeah. So looking at uh, from the asset side or from the capital in Somebody will require capital, you know, if it's a consulting firm or, or any company. Yes. You have a cost of capital. Yes. Either to grow the business, you need to earn a capital outlay of, say, you know, 20, 30 million coming in, which can become through capital or, yes. or, 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 so, so is there a decision? So is the DBA applicable to all companies? Because. You see the um, so it could add that asset at their replacement cost. Okay, now that is a key to here because yeah, yeah. no, when we look at a consulting, yeah, my yeah. thing is people, right? It seems exactly. as soon as we go into machinery. You know, manufacturing, we talk about machinery and talk about exactly. It has to be capital intense. So, this again is a good point for you guys to talk about because not many people will talk about it because it's a bit confusing. You see? And the and fact that you can also emphasize the fact that uh, pizza is a manufacturing company, right? Actually, in company, you can use it. Do you consider, uh, do you consider Bits Exxon a labor intensive or capital intensive company? What do you think? Yes, I would say uh, um, you can go in to more capital intense. I mean, it requires both missions and uh, people to run them. Mm -hmm. so in the pizza store, there is a guy sitting by or standing by the machine, you know, to uh, put toppings. Uh, Not necessary, right? Not necessary, isn't it, Jakub? Let's say I measure all those things. Right? If I measure all of it and say, right, I'm going to do X amount of pizza today. It's like a factory model. It will go through. Right? So I put, you know, a certain amount of toppings I put. It depends on the design of it. Okay. I would say one person can handle the whole store. Right. Depends how um, how tech your technology is in the manufacturing. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, so apply this case. It does apply, and this is a very good point for you to uh, for you to bring in because you you need to bring in 
um, to the examiner things that others don't talk about. A very confusing area for a lot of people. Right. To this, into me now because I was teaching another student and she was struggling to figure this out, and she level three, the final stage student, and she couldn't figure this out. Right. So because of that, that you know, I I thought yes, definitely this this is quite applicable for us. Okay. Again, they talk about costs which are normally treated as expenses under generally accepted accounting principles may be added back to no, these are considered as investment building for the future. These may be research and development, advertising and good deal. These are back to account profit to reflect the economic reality of the expenditure. Okay. Right. So that is where things change a bit. Mm -hmm. Adjustments are sometimes made to economic depreciation so that it reflects the economic fall in asset value due to when tear or observed assets. Yeah, Andrew, like r and research and development, mm -hmm. it is against an accounting rule. Correct. Correct. But, but case, we will capitalize it. Yeah. That because I'm saying it is going to give me added benefit later on. Okay, so I'm keeping it like an asset. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Exclude it from NOPAT as it's taken into account in the capital charge. Equals replacement cost of net assets employed. Mala by the average cost of capital. Yeah. Right? So the thing here is they take the replacement cost of net assets employed. So you of um, massaging around the, um, the net assets. That's what this mm -hmm. is. Now, the other side of it is it's not an easy thing for you to calculate. Advantage. It's not the easiest thing to calculate, right? It's difficult. Okay, well, yes. they are very easy to calculate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Replace was the subject. Correct. And you, get, you can get different patients, different prices, and different resources. Yes. So that, and you know, if you're trying to get good measure, right? If you've got it, it is a good measure to have, and you can you can work on it, and uh, it's something that you can, can you propose, but also at the same time state okay one of the key disadvantages may be trying to calculate it because it's the easiest one to calculate, right? That's why we don't find many companies using this economic value added. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a few, few seconds, just to let you uh, know example, I mean, a real life example we have in our group here. Uh -huh. We are a company, mm -hmm. the other subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, established uh, credit line facilities with the banks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the funding, they go to the bank and they take a short term loan. Yes. To, to get things run and the loan, let's say, at 2%. Yes. But for me, as a, a startup company, I have to go back to the owner. Yes. And, and literally beg for money. Yeah. And uh, what percentage do you think he charged me? <laughs> he percent. Is the bank charging you? 2%. Wow, that's rich. Yeah. So, so, they, they yeah. want to give us. Yes. So, this is a startup business. Uh, he's starting for the risk of the company. Yes, yes. If you go yes. back, he loses 10%, he loses 100% of the capital employed in the company. So, he, yeah. I assume. Now, if you go there, maybe I'm not in bed with that, right? 
He's charging you a category of cost, which means that he gets it based on his business. He's doing your business. It's a startup company. Well, so, well we, we, we've been you know established since like five years ago, and and we still and we still incur a loss. <laughs> Okay. Because because of that we need funding from time to time, you know. And he says, Well, I will give you money, but I'll charge you nine percent. Yeah. Uh, otherwise go to the bank and talk to them and establish credit facilities, blah 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 blah. Yeah. So you need to charge you nine percent on lending? Yes. Coming to your capital or and again, the line is breaking. Yeah, he, he's giving this money to a shorter loan. Or he's giving money yeah, to yeah, as a short, short-term loan. Yes. Intercompany loan. No, yeah. even intercompany, right? Because he's an individual. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So what I wanted to just let, why did I bring this example? Because the cost of capital. Well, you know, yes, greater average that, cost of capital. That, yeah. And, and, and yes, that, that's that's my point. Yes. yes. That, that's yeah. So that's what I was saying. Answer that if you use your your the past term, I don't know where is the past term, short term loan or loan, I don't know where is it past. It's It's well, you know. Because I'm losing the money, I mean, my company is losing money, so it's, mm. I can't pay it back. <laughs> so yeah. it's a, you can, it's a short, long term. Yes. Yeah. It will take years to pay him back all the loans that he has given us. Right, right. Maybe indirectly might be better. Yeah, the problem is the banks will not give me money. Yes. Because he's making a loss, right? <laughs> Making a loss, I'm a new company. Yes. And they trust us yet, you know. Yes. Okay. It's very interesting in the sense, you see, there's a lot of opportunity in the market for, you, for your uh, service, but you are finding it difficult to manage the cost. Exactly. Yes. So exactly. this is a problem that you're having. Have you ident and you you also said you have a lot of admin costs, correct? Yeah, yes. And for these admin costs, well, it depends. How do you find the word a lot of admin costs? Yeah. I mean, is it a lot in, in fact, or is it necessary evil? Mm. I mean, we started a company and since like four years ago with mm -hmm. our operations. We need, yeah. I mean, we need to establish divisions. Even if you start on day one, you have to have accountants, mm -hmm. you have uh, procurement, you have to have uh, marketing, uh, HR department, and MD to establish Correct. the operations. And yes. So, so I mean, it's, I can say fairly that our admin is reasonably and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not but promise because I'm a new company in the market, I have few contracts yes. that contribute a small margin to cover my overhead. Yo, you want more and more contracts exactly. as well as, want, yes. Yes, I want the, the, the owner to be patient, you know, give us more yes. time to be at the overheads in the future, you know. We try to identify if there is an excess, if an excess employee we have, we don't need, we try mm -hmm. to yeah, and he told him to another subsidiary or let him go. That's that's what's going on now, you know, to to make us lean. But yes. uh, most of my administrative workers, you know, accountants, the accounting it's only me and uh, another small guy. That's it, you know. So can mm -hmm. I fire one? Of so on the skeleton level, let's say skeleton yes. level of the admin admin uh, costs, but. Mm -hmm. I don't have much of contracts. Yes, uh, that's your issue. So, so, uh, maybe you get your cost Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the volumes are down. Correct. Correct. But kind of 
the the structure in place which is necessary to operate. Yes, yes, right? Yes. But the cells is not sufficient to support that structure. Very good, Sanjay. Exactly. Yes. Economies of scale, like if you increase volume, you need to do the same. You know, when you do, if you both of your hair, so that means uh, that's your cost. That was your idea. Yes. And I and it's very competitive also. Yes. That's the other problem. You have to tell me. So now we let's look at non-financial performance indicators, right? You look at um, things like from employees. For us, it becomes quite important value of an advice, right? Can be provided quickly, easy to understand, tailored to circumstances. The of income, incoming supplies, the quality of work done, measure of customer satisfaction. For us, these two become quite important, right? Uh, we would not look at our now our going into the employee side, right? Imagine people like McDonald's, right? KFC, they continuously have this issue, and we would also because we are hiring young, right? So the we have a lot of turnover. Yes, there's turnover. Okay, consistency, constantly. But how can we keep them at least to, like, you know, you join at the age of 16, right? How we keep them 16, 17, 18, at least 19? How can we keep them for four years? Because we can, yeah, you keep them for a few years, right? That is going to be the key. How do you think you can keep? Now, even though yeah. we're talking about some other strategies, like the, the manual accounting, but I want to bring this in because it's also a key thing for you. Yeah. 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 How do you do it? I can suggest, for example, profiling plans. In, in a, I want to treat them, treat my employees in bits of time as partners, not as employees. Yeah, yeah. So, remember when you were 16? <laughs> when you were 16, do you care about profit plans? Most <laughs> when you were 16? Or <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have worked, you know, uh, in, my, in my, let's say, when I was like eight years old or nine years yeah. old, in a cafeteria. What cafeteria is? It's like a. Uh, uh, also restore or something. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, I had that you know small experience in my life, you know. But yeah. what I'm talking about what I'm talking about here, I will inform my you know new joint uh, employees that if you complete if you complete five years with us, mm. you you will start to share in our profit. It's not only salary. So you will treat it as a partner. You will have your own share of the profits from the company. So in, in this case, you know, I will, I will make him feel that he is not just an employee, uh, mm -hmm. a, a watch slave, you know. But, you know, he is a real, a real partner, and his actions when uh, you know encourage him to make the company more profitable. So this actually is um, used at Starbucks as. Well, profit sharing. Oh. Yeah, we used share, uh, yeah, yeah, profit sharing in Starbucks. Another thing that was really important in the US and which Starbucks did was um, health insurance, right? So that fits health insurance. I thought it's silly to have health insurance. Not really. No. My case here is in yeah. Yes, not in the U.S. Yeah, right. Yeah, yes. And this is because um, the founder of Starbucks, I mean, he came from a very, very um, uh, poor, in a poor family. They went through difficulty. One of the biggest issues was, you know, he found where, you know, his father lost his job and because of illness and he didn't have insurance, 
right? He made it a point to say, if ever I have a company, I will have medical insurance, the health insurance for my employees. Right? He, he, he followed that through, right? That is a big thing. I mean, U.S., the first thing people say is, like, you get a job, you get a job that gives you medical insurance. That means that you have made it. Correct. We take things for granted. We think, you know, um, but U.S. it's a big issue, right? But what else, Gavin, any other creative ways that if you have, you know, you're thinking of 16-year-olds, right? how mm-hmm. can you retain the 16-year-olds? Career and but then it's very short term, you know. I think can become school manager. Yes, pay their college tuition or the major part of it. So, what what is that an interesting thought? Partnering, partnering in. Education. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So partnering in educa- education. Excellent. Right? So you become a financier for that. Right? Not going to do it for everybody, but you will select your employees. Right? And you have this mm-hmm. scheme. So obviously, the guys who are interested will go into this. Right. But then you will also have something like community building, right? To come together as one. So it's not about you coming, going to pizza time, doing work, getting twenty dollars, getting back. Right? Mm-hmm. You're creating a community. But then suddenly it is more than money. Going there, it becomes part of my life. It's my lifestyle. I go there. Mm-hmm. They may build things for the community as well. Right. So this community building activities, we will link it to CSR. Oh. And happily link it to CSR as well. Right. Suddenly you're creating with you um, a, a set of people who are going to be, you know, you are educating them, plus you are making them, you know, involving them in committee, you're making them very good citizens, right? I, I, I can add one important point. Of yeah. Yeah. Food, this will us, you know, to, to retain, retain our uh, employees, mm-hmm. not, to, not to improve my, uh, you know, turnover or uh, mm-hmm. you know, what is not. It's about the future of the company. Who will run it after, after the term general? Then they will build. This will build succession yeah. planning. You know, and I know some stories, you know, the, the CEO was just a truck driver with the company. So the mission is very important, you know, for the life of the company and yeah. planning. And number two, uh, Andrew, uh, I worked four years. We had something called the SPP, mm-hmm. to discounted stock purchase plan. Right. A month, number zero will deduct you know, a small amount from my salary. Mm-hmm. I purchase, they pay they pay the balance to purchase stock for me. Mm-hmm. So after I yeah, leave the company after ten years, mm-hmm. I will not get my end of service benefit. I will I will also have shares in number J. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, after four years I'm not joking here, you know, they they paid me ten thousand ten thousand USD, can you imagine? I just I spent four years with them, I resigned yes. to continue my education and I was paid ten thousand USD. And so I'm talking about two thousand six. Mm. So yeah. Yeah, imagine if I stayed, you know, <laughs> if I stayed until now, how much that amount will be? Correct. 
Correct. That, that's that's uh, uh, I think uh, a bit of time we can apply that. Yeah. And what do you call it? Discounted. Support your plan. Yeah. 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 This in similar thing with Origin Energy, where I work in Australia as well. So they, but not, um, they give you stock, not discounted, not not a discounted, but they give you stock as um, as bonus. Right. That's even much greater. So yes. <clears throat> no, no, no. We have come up with some quite interesting, um, you can see, quite interesting ways of retaining employees. Right. Um, that becomes quite an important thing for us. And look at that. Um, when you have this, then our labor turnover decreases. Absenteeism is because remember, there are the young guys who are there and who will come up with different innovative ideas, right? Not the fellows who are sitting in the boardroom who will come up with the innovative ideas, right? So exactly. the people who are on the ground facing the customers right in front of them, you know, they are the ones who say, you know, what about, shall we do this? Shall we do that? You know, how to serve different? You are absolutely correct, Andrew, because people sitting in the town not necessarily yes. see the details. Come. Yes. Because to be honest, in my, in my current culture here in Saudi Arabia, and the girls, that's not the case. Unfortunately, mm. that's, that's not the case. Um, the, the top management doesn't value the guys you know, on the ground. Yes. And they, they don't believe these small guys, the little guys, you know, can, can bring an idea that can change yes. the world. They don't see this. They don't see this. Yes. Sometimes, you know, uh, the culture is such, you know, people don't value, people don't value another human being. They look at the, the grades they're in and they think, you know, they don't have brains. But it's not so. Certain yes. circumstances have put you there, but that doesn't yes. mean that they can't come up with some brilliant idea. Exactly. Yes. 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 How do you do have yeah. these programs where you put up yes. and leave the Yes. Uh, you know, at least you find that your, your ideas are value. Exactly. Right. I don't have watched Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, movie Inception. Did you watch it, Andrew? And gave it? Yes. Yes. Inception. <laughs> I, I wish I can have access to the brains, you know. I mean, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of brilliant ideas and human beings we can utilize and make them into reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that Google said, um, some of the employees from Google uh, mm -hmm. once came, once were giving a lecture, and they were saying that they developed, they developed their kind of programs, and then they have... Um, these other developers across the world, you know, the two nerdy guys who are like all, all interested in what's happening, you know, the latest thing, uh, the kind of uh, app that they develop. And what Google does is they just sit out to all these, um, all these developers, like the version, they send it out, right? They said it's unreal what these guys come up with. Say you know we are sitting in like either U.S. you know somewhere, and you are you only your your experience is limited. But these guys, they are they have exposed different kinds of environments, so they come up with different uses for this application, which they mm -hmm. could have never ever dreamt. Yeah, of. Yeah. Wow, wow. So that again, you can see how innovative come. Companies, what kind of uh, things that they use to kind of put it out there and then say, hey, listen, let's see what happens. Let's see what they will bring out, you see. Exactly. They have more people on the marketing side, in terms of, you know, uh, human legal side, 
a more clear now you know now this product so all you know depends on not what you want but correct uh, when you and you get another need the need yes yes so yes. that's where the thing is coming now you know it's like you know you have a laptop now you have an ipad you have a, a phone you know you create the need you have this yes you know, i mean uh, once do i want a phone that's got all my email then i go and buy my ipad and um, you know why do i need it they have a laptop Yes. Exactly, but it has become convenient. You are on the move. You come home. You use this. this. So it's not easy. Yes, it's easy. Really tools play every. Yes, you never about it, but Let's the see. company brings it on to you. On to you, and they ask the question, "Why not?" Yes, correct. 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 Why I, not? Yeah. I love, I love this. Why not? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Good. Just got some very animated discussions going, which is good. Yeah, it, it energizes the uh, you know the mind. You you then that, that is exactly what is required in these SIMA sessions, right? They want you to think outside the box, and it, you have to think innovatively. You need to think, you know, just outside the box. Uh, think of things which you never, you know, which are not there, right? And yeah, put it into the examiner saying, you know, we why don't why don't we come up with this that the other and examiner has got a, a different answer suddenly you know? because a lot of the people what they will do is stick to the no things right they are sure. very very number conscious so they, they go on to that line and that's exactly why the ignorance fail those people because they don't want number crunches right so the scorecard i think uh, you guys are uh, quite um, familiar with the balance scorecard. Yeah. So I'm not going to dwell uh, too much mm -hmm. in the balance scorecard um, area, but mm -hmm. what you will have to do is you have to come up with balance scorecard. You know what would be the KPIs, right? Mm -hmm. So that would be kind of a homework balance scorecard. Right. Right. What do you think it would be? Okay. And let's go into benching. Uh, we can benchmark meet the pro benchmarking. It's a different benchmarking that we can do. Right. Um, and we can look at potential improvements. Now, this, this, we, we can do it very well with this, um, with this pizza company. But however, the trick is, is to capture the information properly. Yeah. Right. Where the difficulty lies, you need to capture and monitor. Important, both of them. Okay. Transfer pricing, my other big topic, right? Transfer is, it so, is it so important in, in, this, in our case here, Andrew? The reason Transfer. is, yes, yeah. the reason is because we are doing our door centrally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? And transferring it. Okay. Right? We also have where we purchase certain produce in one area for the central group because let's say we we and then transfer that toppings certain toppings okay so let's go into the transfer pricing what is the aim of transfer pricing so what do you think about this yeah, well let's just start with the definition andrew mm-hmm Which is a definition. Uh, the transfer price is basically uh, the uh, the links uh, of items or or uh, equivalents or services between a company and its sub subsidiary between sister companies. Let's say sister companies as well. So there, there's a seller, there is a buyer, but they are the same group. They are a parent and uh, and uh, you know and as 
So, my, my, what I mean, what transfer pricing is, is the negative news we hear in the media and that multinational corporations use transfer pricing to avoid taxes. Correct. Yeah. So, so, so you, I mean, remove this negativity from from mind here and elaborate more. How? What is the side of transfer pricing here in Bitsa Town King? Because now, in the time, yeah, is yes. what it is, why would we use transfer pricing, is to promote autonomy. That's why we will use transfer pricing, right? And it clearly states here, correctly set transfer pricing, that is, correctly set transfer pricing, is a way of promoting divisional autonomy. Um. Now, in head office, if I have other ideas of reducing taxes, right, do that with transfer pricing. It is not ethical, right, which is, but the, what, like you said, Jakub, which is quite right, where they will use transfer pricing, the mechanism, to uh, kind of use the profitability of the company. But here we try to use it for uh, the good of the company. Yes. And that's my, yeah. my question to you, Andrew. Example, please. For yes. so the good of the head office. Now, if you have a Saudi Arabia and the UK, and if you want to go to Saudi Arabia, in so he can take us there. Because he will, you know. If you can put to this part of the world, Yes, yes. But it is consolidating the finance. What we're saying is it will it will promote autonomy to that particular division. Right? When it is done correctly. Okay, it's one of the key things that we advocate. And also the the price itself free right that okay it's because your head office to I mean, can't transfer the pizza dough free at you know dollars I can get from outside for three dollars right that discrepancy that is where the companies will fall in fall out of grace with a lot of authorities when they come and check right so it's not case that companies use companies don't use transfer pricing to manipulate tax right and manipulate reduce the tax but authorities do and check this right so transfer pricing is one area they will check thoroughly because it is Expose this kind of manipulation. So, and you say auto autonomy to promote autonomy. Let's say, let's say the dog purchase is not centralized. Mm -hmm. And it will go and with its dough from you know, their preferred, their preferred source. Mm -hmm. That's what you mean. There will be no autonomy between the shops because this shop it will have different cost of goods sold from different locations. The price, the sense, promotes autonomy. It's done centrally. Is it, is, it, is it that your point? Not really. So what I'm trying to say is um, credit transfer prices. Okay, if I'm we thing is, is manufacturer manufacturing only dough let's say one section manufactures only dough yeah? so i'm setting the transfer pricing to my other subsidiary companies uh, stores right? and i will i will um basically price it at a very competitive price right right in one sense Okay, 
because now I'm to my all other 900 plus stores. And I'm saying, well, I'm not selling it to you at $20. I'm selling it to you actually more than even the market. Right? Mark sell you at $3. I'm giving it to you at $2. Mm. So, we, I'm very competitive. At, right? Then the other party, so other who's purchasing it, also has quite good transparency. It's transparent. The price. They, they also have the independence to see, well, of course, by buying with interest, I'm advantage rather than going outside. Because outside, mm-hmm. you could never get it at that price because you will break the purchase. Right? Mm-hmm. Each one will buy small bits from different people, not in a centralized manner. Mm-hmm. Me, I can give it at a good price because I'm selling to a 900 stores at a uh, good good, uh, good profit too, right? But it's very competitive. So in divisional autonomy, if it's the price is set quickly, it I mean on both sides, I would say. On my side, I'm selling it. Yeah. Okay, because then you can, as a profit, you know how much it costs. Correct. Correct. Yeah. He's selling more than the market. Uh, uh, market is going to be selling more than the market. The guy is having buy it from the market. And the owner's perspective is, you know, manufacturing cost is higher than the market. He's going to stop the separation. And so you can't. Yeah. This is how you look at it. Because... Uh, and the 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 fact of the matter is doing the crowding practice is you you competitor between the segments also you have a product you have a product price you reduce your cost you can uh, uh, you can better and the guy buying it also he can be purchasing that and then he put it on the cost so you can use section as well they have another hidden agenda. Thing else. Now, when that happens, the trap pricing, the, all the goodness well, goes I, out immediately. Yeah. That's the problem. I have a question, Andrew. Yes. We, we should list also here that it's a bit of the time. Mm-hmm. As of the central uh, manufacturing of uh, dough, uh, the same price to each, uh, you know, uh, to each store I have. Mm-hmm. We tell them the dough, but remember that we are male centrally, but we have different geographic locations. Correct. Uh, we will move into a new territories. I think it's mm-hmm. B land or B land mm-hmm. or C, C land. So, so if I am in Italy, I open a store in Greece. Yes. The, the answer price will be the same, but the cost will be uh, different. Why? Because I have to deliver, I have to take a longer distance to deliver the dough to Greece than the Italian stores. You know, so. Yes, right. Well, and that is where, that is why you will not, not, now I come into Forex, I will talk about it. We, we will say, we will to nice our foreign exchange exposure, right? But doing that centrally and then transferring, okay, uh-huh. to, um, to, say, to Greece, I'm what's my transport cost? Yeah. So one is my exposure to foreign exchange. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because I'm manufacturing in Italy in in um, US and then sending it to Greece yes. to their currency. Now, should currencies be a big problem for me? If I'm in one country, like I think 
uh, we, I'm in P land. So P land, I see everything in, in set, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm operating quite another large operation in an area which is I, correct? So even there, you, you could work, you could do done separately in that one rather than wow. you move yes. stuff from P to I. That's good, yes. Right? Why do you do that? Because then your export currency is also reduced, transportation is also reduced. Your manufacturing also might be cheaper, you never know. You never know. You never know. Right? So you immediately you down. Right, because two of my exposures I'm taking out completely, and risk associated with it. Transporting from A to B, right? Mm -hmm. Other country, it's it's oh, impossible, impossible, right? And that's bread here in our local town because you cannot import them from Qatar, Bahrain. I mean, it's a long time. Yes. But it comes there, its freshness is gone, right? It's spoiled. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So limits with which transfer pricing should fall. Remember, the sum of supplying division is marginal cost and the opportunity cost of item transferred. Right? Maximum. Right? The lowest market price at which the re receiving division could purchase. So the easiest way of looking at it, the maximum your target be lower than what is in the market. Okay. The easiest thing, the way to think about, about it. Right? Anything that you are that you uh, any exception. Okay. Transfer prices based on market price. How do you set the price? A problem. This is also an issue. So I would say you could set the transfer price. You can ask, you know, at what price is door transferred, right? And you could make that, that could the target. You know, the, the cost may be, be more than your what is available in the market. Now, that is a good point where you can advise saying, well, that means you need the opportunity to improve the efficiency of operations. Obviously, that's why my cost is high, right? That is in my cost of the dough is higher than the market. So I have a lot of opportunity to improve. Okay? But if I protect my, my dough manufacturer, Right. There is going to be that like a protection system in tree. You know, certain countries, certain governments protect their trees, right? So the result, you achieve efficiencies. You don't innovate. Right? But no, you're going to get protected anyway. Right, right. right. Okay. So, prices based on cost, cost unit variable cost and selling price. So, should we put it on standard cost or actual variable cost, full cost or full cost plus? So, there are many ways that you, you can do it. Right? What you propose, the ideal one should be. Right? So, you can propose. Right um, to the management. Well, this is the transfer price that I propose, and you justify. We can go into various forms, right? Because a notion may be saying that um, um, M has heard about the transfer pricing, and he wants to look at um, you know creating this door door sector as a profit center. Now he wants to use, um, he wants to have transfer pricing as a new method of transferring these goods. Right? Then he will ask what, what is the advantage, disadvantage, and also to advise 
is what theme strategy should be right and talk about this right that's a question where we can talk about well we use standard costing actual costing why don't we use variable cost cost full cost plus what are the advantages disadvantages right so full cost is actually you um answering all your inefficiencies to your department so and we start your using your selling price the cost sorry not the selling price the cost cost of the pizza and at the the margin per pizza is also reducing correct i think it will considering more context it will be the external cost it is due to function yes it's not it's not transparent it will be a normal price on that side correct we no we don't know right no how is selling it currently right it because there is um you might you're right because it says that is selling the products yeah because they are sales they sell yes. products in mhm mhm okay we are capacity constraints that we need to look at and negotiating transfer prices mm-hmm. I, will, i will just leave this for you to read through and kind of get an understanding how transfer pricing will affect our our one so let me look at Processor. Okay, this is one. We will have plenty of projects for sure. Okay, there are many opportunities for us to have projects. Okay. okay. Projects. Right. So, okay. what sort of projects will you do? You think you will go get in? into bits of time here or general yeah top pizza time what do you think hi hmm. i would say uh, of a uh, i would say um part of um Okay. Then uh um, uh um, the call company a question a question a question right um the franchise and franchise the different models of uh, building tools it investment yeah. right so this is a type of project i'm just saying at a high level what sort of projects will you get into right i investment then plant building machinery okay this is your kind of project that you will go into when you into this project you look at the taxation working capital inflation what cash flow should that will come through right mm-hmm. process of investment decision how would you cap investment right did it making around this right what cash flow will you get mm-hmm. right. as well as then you look at the tension working capital and inflation on this investment okay so if you remember i'm going back to this right right cuz the saas model right city acceptability feasibility plus sustainability model we look at investment making 
in process. Is when you create, when you are looking at a project, you to think, you think about it in more strategic sense. In this, why am I saying it? What strategic objective is fulfilling? Right. So you need to ask the question. Okay. Fulfilling. The asking this, and it applies even in your day-to-day -day life, right? Be good at investing in different projects, but ask them what the business benefit. No, right? Mm. Uh, link it to the strategic drivers. Can't it? So why why did you do it in the first place? We thought it was a fantastic idea at that time. Right? Believe me, this happens over and over again across a lot, um, across the world in companies. Welcome to one. Yeah, no, 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 no. Welcome to you. You should ask your boss when he started his company. Did he hear these things? The person. In this part of the world, you won't have an idea. He goes and pays him the money. Yes. Guy is, uh, you know, these are the reports. Yes. He gives you the very part of it that he does. Yes. So I mean, he, he has a very thing that uh, <laughs> yes, it is a subjective report. Ultimately, yes. when you look at the reality, you know, you find a far, far, yes, sir. This is the norm here in my country. The, the ownership, I mean, there is no separation between church and state. What I mean is, mm -hmm. there's no separation between management and ownership in, money, mm -hmm. in, 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 many, in many family businesses in particular. Exactly. This is there, but we have to live with it. You cannot hold the CEO accountable. Why? Because he is the same owner. So whatever mistakes he, he makes, it will be repeated again and again and again because he is the owner and nobody will want to say to him, no, you are wrong. He is as a king, not as a, a CEO, in fact. And that's one of the demands I, I go through, you know, how to deliver bad news, <laughs> how to know in a, in a in a particularly correct way, so <laughs> my head will be shut yeah. off. You know, so. a lot of uh, David, but you, you don't no, I, I, I understand from where you're coming from because sometimes they want to have a project, but uh, uh, you know, uh, you put a person in a in a place and you have results overnight without giving him the you know the time to mind in the recruitment. Yes, you know, you bring a person from a a company doing very well, but he's yes. doing well because of the tools that he has. The right. management in terms of yes. employees, in terms of potential capability that he has. So yes. you can put it into a company. Uh, you have those things in place. Yes. You don't want that. And you know, if you want to, you know, if your know, cost are higher than that company, uh, you know, price that you are pitching at, you will not get the business. So I sometimes understand, you know, sometimes these things can draw down the whole group. So. Because yes, you where you have yes. made, you think okay, and you know sometimes integration is also you know different. You try to go into backward integration, forward integration, you know, and when the whole thing starts falling, you know, this is happened to the petrochemical sector in Saudi Arabia. You know, they have a lot of backward integration. So they are at very low level. You know, Gavin, but most of family businesses in Saudi Arabia cannot survive beyond the generation. They disappear. They, they are gone. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not run in a constitutional way. You know, they are not run in, in a professional manner. You know. Yes. So the second generation comes on board. There will be political fights between the family members and the mm -hmm. company will go into the survival. You know. 
Okay, so you are looking for a job, Yakub. <laughs> 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 When I get I get past Shima, it will be much easier for me to look for a job, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. But the experience. If yeah. the thing is, the thing guys, the thing is, is it's amazing. Even if other, even if the current company is doing things wrongly, actually you are gaining that experience. So somebody else is you are not you are seeing something unfolding in front of you. uh and you are not paying that price someone else is yes 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 that is the good thing because somebody like you when you go into market yourself it is you will have much more than any thing can offer right because you will say the ground reality this is what really happens you know because people will take you for that experience you know uh, yes. that's something that you know a fully qualified accountant who has had no experience can never give you know, the point i think i'm talking to yeah so i mean it's an interesting thing where you, you could see uh, i mean you talk about the owners right but i have experiences and where again in study at this particular company company we looked at the it investment and really really funny because this is stock again with this company uh, it was listed in the stock exchange it was a very large company right? but they realized my the it investment is going crazy right it's not controlled because we had exploration and up as well as downstream activity mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. when we looked at the whole thing then um kept gemini came in and did a consulting uh, thing for about 2 months but realized and said to the vice to the senior management were you know you when you do investments right go to project review board for the whole company because mm-hmm. what is so was there was so many Uh, in fact which mm-hmm. duplicate it okay right the a does not know what b is doing okay. as both are doing the same thing then mm-hmm. things oh i'm going to start this good idea i have got so to start some yes. right so in the trophy here right you have been investing millions and millions you know like a effort but it's happening i think in very large companies where you know the this uh, centralization really is important and and but and the bad what happened to uh, slumber jair uh, right here as it was in the 2000 to at the year 2000 yes uh, they suddenly the top management decided that oh well, Well, uh, it's a new company, and it specializes in IT, in technology. Yes. And we're aiming. What the yes. hell do we have to do with IT? Number one, we are in oil field services. Correct. Why do we waste millions? And they have listed, I think, about five years USD, five billions. Correct. And they sold this failing company at the end. They for less than a hundred million. Wow! It was big catastrophe, big, big, big waste of money. An example where companies move away from their core business and <laughs> think, well, "I'm good at doing this. Let me do this because <laughs> I I developed it in my company." Right? That happens. They developed it there. company then therefore they think well i can do this for other customers as well right so we, in this company with origin energy we use cambridge cambridge because we use that system right. so yeah, this, these are good examples now it's unsurprising for our um, our 
what would be what what are the key things do you guys think that we should have i was setting the price that's the thing at what price we set it at right there are we use variable cost in this case and do we do we agree on the benefit for the variable cost or market price yeah in the price then you get you should critique right critique the strategy okay okay and okay. recommend and the right how real our current cost as well yeah, yeah. if you currently then you have market price if you are selling on the market yes no, correct. Yeah. correct so because what i'm trying to do is well say market price but my actual cost might be much lower so why are we going and selling at market price maybe we should bit at a lower price right because, well our guys need to make uh, because you know we make our product competitive in the market and that's what's important what should we consider in terms of the pricing transparency for yeah, right? to avoid clashes with authorities right correct transparency that's important Yeah, prices or lower prices, both. Okay. You have to be transparent to the government. Correct. Right. Transparency. What else should we look into? Right. Mm-hmm. Should look at um, do in the single country. Mm-hmm. Right. Single country. Right. Um, in logistic cost, and exposure. Correct. So we we started about project appraisal, right? We looked at. um second we'll add project the types of projects right and, and we look at the deviation phase decision phase implementation phase right at the post audit post completion right um post com audit is something that people try to avoid why is that Something project. audit. You, you will finish a project and you will then audit it. Do or maybe you see what I am. The thing is, is benefit realization. Right. Let us learn. Right. Risk. I love this whole phrase. Lessons learned. There is a story. <laughs> So there are a lot of a lot of information to start your own TV series. Oh. 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 <laughs> next week, next week. Yeah. <laughs> so we look at post commission audit. We look at benefit realization. Have we actually realized the benefit? Okay. That is uh, learn. Okay. Once have we learned? Now this also happens. Two lessons learned. Nicely keep it in a report. Report buried somewhere. We do another project. We forget this completely. Is to rectify the problem. <laughs> that that's happened in my group, Andrew. To be honest, I mean, I mean, I'm sorry to speak. Yeah. Okay. And look into something and draw yes. the lessons back because structure of ownership and management 
God's just repeated again and again. And again. Surely lessons learned and review, um, review, review when new start up. Okay. Yes. Then right, risk space and, and, and uh, um, other things that you never thought of have come about, right? Um, that, you know, this is we close it very quickly. We don't want to go to P2, P3. Motivate managers because I mean there are not only negatives but there are positives as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a control process, right? And so it can um, because it links to the KPIs. Okay. Project. Now. The next ones we talk about all oh. pay method, oh, some rate amazing. of return, yeah. okay. and the IRR. Yes. Now, I would, yes, what I would want you to really go through is, right, the nascent value IRR. Um, the advantages and disadvantages, right? Okay. Okay. Because when we do the the mock exams, you will find there's always questions on this, right? You will get questions on this, right? For sure. So they will not basically ask you to calculate certain things. They will give you the information and ask you to again interpret. Okay. Right, you about the discounting rate used. I ask, you know, certain inflation is so much, discounting rate is so much, and they will give you know, will so many other parameters where you have to kind of uh, come up with well, what is the most appropriate discounting factor then? Okay. Right, I would ask you for next time to go through this this area. Right. If you're a bit rusty on these things, you go through the go to books on that for our NPV DCF. Okay. So what we will do is um, close for today, right? And um, I'm also what I'm doing is now I'll start uh, sending you the, the uh, that we have been working on so that you oh. can go through it as well. The slides and you on the notes? The slides, yes. Yeah. 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 Because that had a lot of, of notes in it, so you can refresh your memory. Now we are in quite a good state. I had, you know, I wanted just to share uh, like I told you. Yes. Uh, are we with the, with the uh, listen now? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, share my thoughts with you. Uh, very, very indeed uh, to join um, this program. Yes. I've long been thinking about being certified in accounting, but I wasn't, to be honest, I can't blame anybody but myself. Yeah. I was serious in, in the past, you know, to get. Uh, um, my CA done, my CMA done. I have, I have all those plans. Ahead. A long time ago. Right. I have. I don't have the will. Yeah. To, to pursue them, you know, uh, mm -hmm. in my in my past years. Yeah. Now I have a great opportunity. I just want 
from you and to, to summarize or to make a, a road uh, where we are, what we have learned, yeah. um, what we should know so far, you know, what we should have read so far. Mm-hmm. So, uh, because I was feeling lost at the beginning of the uh, sessions, so what's expected from me, what does me to review, read every week, you know. I was, and I was busy with my uh, company annual audit, you know, we are in New Year now, and they are auditing my book for 2015, and they are keeping me very, very busy. Yeah. And that's why I couldn't allocate the sufficient time to go, you know, into details of, of the materials and to review the notes that you are making with us. You know. So, so I'll, I'll tell you one thing, right? Um, so attend a class is not sufficient at all, right? Okay. Because um, you apply. So at the, I think both of you have the potential to pass. I can tell you that. But it, it goes into application of the mm-hmm. right. Um, so the first sessions, what we did was we went through the whole case study, reviewed the case, right? So we dissected the case. Now what we're doing is going through um, the the application of theory into the case, right? Mm-hmm. Because in this can I, way, can I download the case? Send you from uh, the website from the ultimate access. I have is it available sent, or the same? No, I sent you the case. Okay. I have to via email. If you okay. don't have right away, I'll send it to you again. Let me look at it. Okay. I will check. Don't want to send it to you again. Okay. Yeah. Because you have it. Okay. Yeah. So that's one. The thing is, um, you have to know your case very well. Right. Now what I'm doing is I'm I'm doing um, a plot theory into the case. So I'm going through the pass card so that I will not that's my structure. Right? I'm this is my structure I'm following so that I not miss out things. Correct? Okay. The next one I'm going to go through is go through um before you get into the mock exams, I will go through the top 10 um, issues. And next, mm-hmm. I will go through the industry analysis. Mm-hmm. All right. That you should know very well when the staff, when go into the uh, mock exams. Having said that, you just rely on this one of hours for you mm-hmm. to pass the exam. You need to do a lot of effort when you do that. So we need the books. You need, need basic, no, no, in a sense, when you're reading, it has to be active reading, okay? You need to know your uh, go to case study, make notes, right? Certain points. We have we have gone through the case and made points. I'll send that back to you. Just back to it and then go through the whole thing again. Maybe you will see additional notes. Notes. So you, you will send the notes and the recorded uh, discussion. Yes, you yes I notes? will. I will. Okay. So the, you you have to spend some time going through your case study and your um your making those notes. Now I'm going taking you through now uh, my see, into the application. Right. So certain things I'm telling you, please go and like the NPV IRR. I'm telling you, go and look into it. Like, so you, let's go in, have a look through the transfer pricing a little bit as well. Right. So it gives you some good insight. Okay. By yourself, because you don't have sufficient number of hours to cover all that. And the other thing is, when you fail the exam, it's unseen material that will come through mm-hmm. and need to immediately apply. The more with the T and the um, and the carry, easier it's going to be. Add information to the thesis study. Okay. Now, there is something called unseen material. When you go into the exam, they will give you unseen material. Right, questions with 
to come. They're there, right. Um, I mean, new examples of questions that may come. Similarly, they'll say, this is the scenario. We are, we are thinking of purchasing this, this thing that specializes in big data. And, you know, uh, MD wants to find out your views on it. So you can then provide, when you, when you provide your view on it, not just say, no, it's a bad idea. It's, it's not, it's not, you should not pursue, but you should give justification as to it, you know, the reasonings behind it. You will talk about, you know, is it linked to the strategy? Is it linked to our objective? From there. If there are some numbers which looks really good, you can talk about the numbers as well, but then you talk about the financial factors. Okay. Make sense? Yes. And just one question before we leave. Yeah, sure. The, uh, now, uh, I, when we come to the mock exams, I know. We, what, you know, these are, is it essay type? Is it one or you have multiple? Yes, essay type. Essay type question. Correct. And this is a computer based exam? Or you just, you know, they're not uh, on your handwriting, so you don't have to bother about that. Okay. Type. Okay. So you might have. Is it, uh, one of one type of uh, uh, question which you have with essay that you have Jerry, there are about four questions in this oh. stage, I believe. Okay. Okay. Four or five minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Right? Um, yeah. And so, yeah. 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 Yes. And when I come to the mock exam, I will go through again uh, how to structure things for oh. you. Right for each because that structure is really important at your exam. Yeah, then we are the homework run through the uh if you know jot down as much as possible the uh and the typical part of it. This part of it you know this this here this here so, so that is the key thing, you know. I, I have I have gone through that. Um, now we are going through the theory, but you know also to again go through both and see, you know, how you can both to Correct. Correct. Do, not just my last question. Maybe it seems sure. stupid, but uh, I don't think that's stupid a question. But I mean, how do we how do we automatically register for the exam when we sign up for? SEMA or do we have to register individually, separately? You have to say it's not a stupid question at all. It's a very important question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, you have to register, right, with, with SEMA. So please, I ask you to immediately contact uh, tomorrow, okay. right, and make sure that you're registered. I will send... a. Uh, um, a note to her and to you to ensure that you're registered. Okay. 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 Fine. Exams uh, on the twentieth, Anju. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not sure whether you're even late. Okay. Just, just check. <laughs> yeah, because because I think you're in Delhi, no? Yeah. 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 I checked about. I I changed it two weeks. Scheduled for April, no, May actually. And I think two weeks ago. But yes, exactly. I told you to change it, isn't it? Because it's, the scale is not applicable. No. 20th of February, Anjo? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's okay. what I'm telling you. I was like, I can focus. You know, so. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. So, you send me an email with Nasima. To take sure about yes, I'm going to send an email. And what is your um, what is the email the number? number. For that with you? Yeah, I think we were registered. Yeah, get the ID number. You need yes. Okay. Register yourself. Yeah. You don't need Nasima. You can do it right away. Yeah, then go to the SEMA site and when you put your ID, it will come. 